All right, uh, this is a quick video on how to lubricate the bearings in your carrier furnace inducer motor and hopefully quiet it down and prolong its life a little bit longer. Uh, the first step we do want to do is before we touch anything in here is we're going to turn off the breaker and shut off switch to it to make sure that we're safe and not going to give ourselves the bazap. So I'm going to turn off my emergency shut off switch here, which is already flipped off. And we're also going to come over here and flip the breaker to the furnace. So you're going to look at your panel, find out where she's at, boom, furnace, shut her off. Then next up, we're going to come over here and pop the door off. On mine, it is just lifting it straight up by this handle and it'll pop right off. I just need two sets of hands for this, so we'll come back in here in a second. All right, now uh, with the door popped off, we're going to look inside. And first thing we're going to do is if we have a non-contact voltmeter, We'll just double check to make sure that we don't got electricity coming through here anywhere. Sure your breaker or switch is off, but who knows how drunk the guy was that wired the place. So we're all good to go here. It's no voltage coming to or from anywhere, even in the main harness here. So we're safe to start monkeying around. So the first thing you want to do is take a picture, say right like this, of your inducer motor, and then note your wire colors. So for mine, blacks on top, whites and bottom, and our ground cables hooked up here. We're gonna start off by disconnecting these two here. So we'll pop these out. And then our three first bolts we're gonna take out are gonna be these guys back here. So one, two, and three up in there. These guys are quarter inch heads and they're all self tappers in the sheet metal like almost everything is with HVAC. And then this whole assembly along with these buffers will pull straight out of the housing. All right, uh, once we get the motor out, uh, first step is going to be taking off this impeller so we can get access to the backside of the bearing. It's held in place by one set screw here. Uh, you can get access to the set screw through a little uh, cutout in the shroud here. But you'll probably have to start off with the uh, long end as mine is quite tight. It's uh, For mine, it's a 1 8 Allen key. So take this, pop it in here, break this free. And then the rest of the way will come on this way, just to make it a little faster. Uh, to get your impeller off, uh, what you might need to do is I put a tiny little bit of penetrating oil in here, and then I tap the center. It doesn't take a whole ton. It's just from being se seized on there over time. Then uh, this will pop right off. Uh, next step after we get the impeller off is to take this uh, back panel off to get easier access to the bearing. Uh, that's held in place by three more of these uh, quarter-inch head screws here, here and here. And also note the ground strap for uh, reinstallation is gonna be on this one here up top. So these three come up pr pretty easily with your, uh, using a quarter inch uh, T-handle here. And then we'll get access to the back to start lubricating that bearing. All right, after you got it uh, unbolted from the three bolts that suspends it in these bushings and the uh, rear fan taken off, we have access to the back bearing here. So what we're gonna do is take either your 3-1 oil or I'm using uh, Super Lube. Oop, come on. Uh, had this kicking around from lubing keyboard keys and I think it's better than 3-1, so I'm gonna go ahead and use that. What we wanna do is get in here and start adding uh, the lubricant to around where this uh, bearing bushing is. And then we're going to want to uh, Give the motor a spin while we add it, and that'll help uh, suck in that oil into the dried out bearings. And then you want to keep doing that over and over again until the oil stops getting uh, sucked into the bearings. Then we'll stop, then we will go over to this side here. And that bearing casing is going to be right there in that silver section, which is a little trickier to get to with this little smaller fan. All right, so for this one, because the other little fans kind of has this little crimp washer on there, I don't really want to mess around with that because they don't have a replacement. So what I've found works is you can take the tip of your dispenser here, put it like right against the shaft, make sure it's angled kind of like this so the oil is going to flow towards it. And then you just want to oil the shaft itself. And then the oil, oil should kind of go down onto the... Uh, bearing from there. After a few drops you want to stop. 
and uh, just give the motor a spin to draw in more of the oil. And it's already a lot quieter. Ideally when you spin it you want to have this thing uh, vertical so that the gravity is going to pull the oil down in towards the bearing ca cavity itself. And then make sure you give her a spin each direction to help try to draw it in. And then just keep going back and forth. Add some more oil in here. And give her a spin. And one more shot. See how it sounds now. Still a tiny little bit of bearing noise, but it's way, way better than it used to be. I'll probably give her a little bit more oil off camera, then we'll switch over to reassembly. All right, and reassembly is going to be the reverse of disassembly. So we're going to take our motor and its mounting plate, and then mounting it back up here. So we're going to get the shaft poked through, and then. Getting these uh, three bolts here with the bushings bolted back up to our mounting plate. These are going to use the longer size of the two quarter inch screws. And also don't forget your uh, ground strap to make sure that, that the bolt's going through the hole there. All right, next we're gonna put the uh, impeller back on. So we're just gonna slide down the shaft. There's gonna be a uh, flat spot in the shaft. That's going to line up with our uh, set screw. So the flat spot in mine is aimed right towards me. So we're going to line up the set screw and slide her down onto the shaft. Should pop on pretty easily. Then we'll go ahead and tighten that up with our 1 8 hex key. Back through the slot. Snug that up. And we'll come back in the inside with the long end of the wrench. And give her a good and tight. Yeah, perfect. Alright, next part's going to be a little fiddly, but we're going to set the motor back in place and then reinstall it with the uh, three shorter quarter inch bolts. Just got to make sure gasket stays in place. Uh, mine's stuck in place just from years. Hopefully yours are the same. Uh, if not, what you can do is you can pre-poke the uh, bolts on through the back side, put the gasket on the motor side, and then that should hold the gasket in place until you get it into, into position and all lined up. I'm going to install the three bolts off camera just because if I let go it's going to fall and get out of place, and then we'll come back here in a second. Alright, now it's all bolted up, and we'll confirm our ground is intact in place, as it should have done earlier. And we'll reconnect our two wires. Uh, in my case, uh, the black's on top, white's on bottom. I'm sure there's an innuendo in there somewhere. We'll slide this back into place. Uh, my black one I noticed actually was a little loose, so I just gave her a quick little squeeze with the needle nose pliers to make sure he's got good solid contact. Yeah, there we go. It's not perfectly quiet, but it's a lot better than it was. And now from here, we will uh, switch our breakers back on, put our cover back in place, and then we'll fire out the furnace and hopefully she's a lot quieter. You can definitely still hear the bearing noise a little bit, but it's far from the branchy squeal it was. And it sounds like it's actually getting quieter the longer it runs and the oil kind of works more into the passages. Hopefully you found this video helpful. If you liked it, hit that thumbs up button. If you didn't, feel free to leave a thumbs down. And in the comments, if you got any tips or tricks, or if you noticed anything I did wrong, I'm certainly not perfect, feel free to leave it down in the comments. Thanks for watching.